So, welcome to this uh, short uh, introduction on PowerShell for uh, Active Directory configuration. Uh, I'm doing this lecture because I promised my student that I would do one and because my live demonstration failed miserably. Um, the purpose of this short demonstration is to give you an introduction of how you can use the built-in scripting language in Win Windows Server 2012, uh, which is called PowerShell to, well, do some common administration administrative tasks. Uh, and more specifically, I want to show you a little bit about how uh, PowerShell works, a very small crash course in about two minutes, and then we're going to go into the module that is, uh, that is used to manage Active Directory. Uh, so, before we go on, uh, I've created my se myself an Active Directory here, where I have my domain, and under domain I have my testing organizational units here. So I have script, OE1, organizational unit 2, and groups, and this is where we will be. Um, and then, if we want to do some scripting, what we're going to have to do is to start up our PowerShell console, um, which we can do by searching for PowerShell and then you'll have two different options which is to start PowerShell and in this if you start this PowerShell you basically get well a normal shell where you can do file listings and you can do pings and you can do whatever you want um, however uh, we want to have a bit of a smarter interface so we're going to search again and we're going to open uh, PowerShell ISE, which is the PowerShell integrated scripting environment, which gives us both the shell, but it also gives us a very nice uh, console where we can where we can write our script. So if we click up here, we have different view options, and I'm going to go for uh, this one where I can do my scripting here, and then the output will be shown down here. So we're going full size with that, and we're removing that. So I'm going to open up um, a template here where I have some pre-configured or pre-made code, uh, PowerShell AD examples. Uh, so before we move on, there is a few things I want to show you about this integrated scripting environment. Uh, namely, uh, as you see up here, we can modify the layout of PowerShell and up here we have the different options on how to run code so if we go with the big green arrow it's used to just run the script as it is all the code from top to bottom and output whatever is happening down here and then we have another nice feature which, le which lets us mark a piece of code and then run it using uh, this run selection which is sort of a document with a small green arrow on it so if I mark some code and I click this icon right here, then I just run the code that I marked and I can see the output down here. And then we have all the different files where we can save and do whatever we want and so on and so forth. So uh, to move on, uh, PowerShell is basically a scripting language where you can do like loops and selections and all of that stuff, but one thing to know that is sort of uh, a difference if you compare it to Bash or uh, how you're used to use maybe Python or Perl for system administration is that it's heavily built around objects that are called commandlets. Um, and just a second. Uh, and a commandlet is basically a command that you can use uh, to do stuff. So, for example, if I just want to show you quickly here, I have a commandlet that is called get ad group member. So, this is a commandlet and then I can use that to find um, users in my Active Directory that are members of a specific group and the argument here is the group that I'm searching for so this command would get me the persons, the people that's member of the group finance uh, so if I run that like so I don't think that I, I don't have a group named finance so I get no output but you get you get the idea. Um, the commandlets they are made up from verbs and nouns where the first part is the verb and then we have dash and the noun. So looking at this get ad group member, get is the verb and ad group member is the noun. And this is important important when we want to search for different commands. 
Then we have the piece of code or the commandlet that is called get command, which we can use to search for different commandlets. If we just run it as it is, like get command, then we will get all the different commandlets that we can use, which is quite a lot. So we, if we want to filter that list, we can do uh, filtering either by adding a dash verb and then uh, write out the verb that we want, like get if we want all uh, commandlets that use get, then we get that, that listing as you see down here. And uh, We can also, if we want to add a noun, so maybe for this example we want all that contains Active Directory or AD, so now we have uh, the verb get and then we go with the noun AD, so we will get all the commands that, in, that are get commands and uh, get and AD, and now you see that we get no input because when you when you specify the search like this then it looks like verbs and nouns ex exactly as you write them out but if we want to have all nouns that include ad like we want uh, get ad group member for instance then we can add a star here which will at the end of ad which will act as a wild card so what this command uh, right here says now is output all uh, commandlets that has get as the verb and then ad followed by something else as the noun and if we try to run that you'll see that we get some um, some output so the, these are the command lists that we can use basically to uh, work with our active directory or the, the, these are the get command lists that we can use and get command lists are used to uh, sort of fetch things and then there are s quite self-explanatory names for the other nouns like or for the other verbs which sort of set if you want to set something and so on and so forth so I'm just going to go ahead and change the color of my output bar to make it a little bit more uh, appealing to you I'm going to go with a black background I think that's going to be to be adding the visibility a bit for you. I should have done this before. If you want to do this on your own, on your own machine, you go Tools in the top menu and then Options, and you'll have a little bit more of a bashy uh, layout to things. Um, so basically, uh, get command, and then if we go just noun ad star, then we will get the commandlets that we can use to work with Active Directory. Uh, as you see, there is quite a few of them. I'm going to go through uh, a couple right here. So first, if we want to look for members of a specific group, as I said, we can go get dash ad group member and then the group uh, group name and or the name of the group that we want to search for. So if I go to my Active Directory, let's see, I should have this is in Swedish. I'm sorry for that. I should have a group named it that has uh, some members Nilla and Test. So if I go back to PowerShell and I go get AD group members and I do IT, then those users should be presented to me. And you see that they are. Uh, what you should know about the Active Directory commands is that um, when you're using Active Directory on your domain controller or in your domain, it automatically prompts the local Active Directory. If you were to use uh, use it from somewhere else, then you could specify what Active Directory to look in. But that's not a problem now because I'm sitting and doing this from my domain controller. It's just some, something to be aware of. Uh, I just want to show you a little bit how you can extend or make the searches a little bit more advanced because here we're just inputting a word and hoping for the best. Uh, if we look at another commandlet, which is get ad computer, which should output the com computers that are uh, added to our domain, uh, then we can also add something that's called a filter. So instead of just typing in the search word, we type in dash filter as an attribute, and then we can specify a search name here, and we specify it as a filter instead, which is a bit, little bit more of a flexible way to do it. So if we go filter star, which is a wildcard, then we should be uh, getting all the computers in the Active Directory as results. So we'll try that. And as you can see down here, we get that we have two different computers in our uh, Active Directory domain. Uh, if I want to filter a little bit further, I can uh, type a search string like the one here. So first I go name, and that means that we're going to look in the part of the computer object that is the name. So if you look down here in the output section and you look, 
fancy. And you look right here, you see that the computer object has a name, a desktop followed by some string. Uh, and if we go then name, and then we can use like, which sort of enables us to search using regular expressions or pattern matching. And then we input the search term, which in this uh, in this scenario is desk followed by an asterisk, which again means something. And we run that, then we should only get the first computer. So this is a very short uh, overview. Uh, you can do the same. There is another commandlet to search for users. Get AD user, and we do the filter, name, like, and test. And so, and you see that we get the users where the name is test down here. So that is a little bit about how we find things. Uh, next th thing I want to show you is how we can create new object to our Active Directory using PowerShell. So for the first part, we, we now want to find, uh, uh, find a way to create new object. And we're going to try to search with a get command. So we do get command dash noun ad because we want Active Directory related stuff. And then as the verb, we go new to find, uh, well, to find how to create new stuff. That's what we're trying. If we run that, we see that there is a load of commandlets. Uh, the one that we're going to use first is new ad group, which we believe will create a new Active Directory group for us. Uh, so we try that, just as it is. We use new ad group, and then we have to, the structure of these new commands is basically that you have the commandlet specifying what you want to do. And then if we go into to Active Directory and look at a group, we can see that uh, any object in Active Directory is actually made up from different attributes. So if we go into uh, right-click one of our groups, take properties, and go to the attribute editor, we'll see that there is a long list of attributes uh, that you that you can set if you want. Uh, the one that is commonly required is the CN, namely the canonical name. It has to have a name to exist, and we add that by using uh, dash name that's going to set the, canon uh, the CN. Uh, in this case we go test group and then we can also select a group scope. You know that groups in Active Directory can be universal, global or domain local in this, and that's this is the way that we specify that. In this case we go with domain local. So I think there is only r already a test group so I'm gonna go with test group 1 and then I'm going to run this and no output, which is usually a good thing, but I'm not trusting myself, so I'm going to do a search where I go get ad group, and I use the filter to find all groups with a name that begins with test, to see that I have my test group one, and there it is. So that's how you create a group. Uh, however, when you create the groups like this, they will end up in the predefined uh, folder in your Active Directory, which is user, so you should see down here, this test group one, and this isn't really where I want it. Instead, I want it to be uh, in script under group because th that's where I decided to put my groups. And um, there is an attribute for this, uh, which is named path. So if we just uh, we're going to call this one test group two, and after here we add an additional attribute, which is going to be path. You see that when I hit the dash, I get a listing of the different attributes that I can have. So that's a nice way to make make sure that you do things sort of right, because you'll get a listing of what you can do, and you can just hit enter when you hit what you want, when you see what you want, and then, uh, and then life will be good essentially. And now we need to know how to specify our path, and I'm going to take the long way around. Uh, we do this by going to uh, our Active Directory. We look at uh, our previously created test group. We go properties. We go attribute editor, and then we're going to see if we can find the path down here. Uh, it should be easier for me to just tell you the answer, which is no, but if we look at the uh, distinguished name, which tells the full path right here, uh, then you see that the distinguished name is made up from the entire list of uh, of steps in the entire domain domain path. So you see here that it begins with a canonical name, which is test group one, and then it's a canonical name called users because it's 
uh, position in the folder user. Notice here, uh, just one thing, that there is a difference between folders, the user is a folder, and the organizational units that I've created myself. If we go look at one of my other groups, uh, it will actually create a bit of a better example. So we go here and we'll look at the distinguished name. Then you see that it's in an organizational unit called Regelgrupper. And then you see that it's actually called OU uh, organizational unit here instead of a uh, canonical name. So the path to this object, uh, the object is called share ITIT uh, full control. So that's the, that's the name. Uh, we're not going to use that in our script, but we're going to need the path, uh, path to where to put it, which appears to be uh, reading from the back DC local, DC DO9 Joaka. Uh, then uh, organizational unit equals regelgrupper. So that's what we're going to type, but we're going to do it for group instead. So then it's going to be DC uh, equals local, DC equals DO9 Joaka, DC equals script, and then DC equals group, and then it should be positioned here. So we're going to try that. Uh, it has to be within uh, double quotes, uh, and then we had beginning first, uh, organization, organizational unit equals groups. Or what was it? Bad memory. Group with a capital G. Then comma. Organizational unit equals script. Then DC equals du nine Joaka, and then DC equals local. So the idea here now is that if I've done everything correctly, I'm going to double check the path, it should be a capital S, then the group, uh, test group 2, should be positioned in the organizational unit group. So let's try to run that. Not, nothing red, that's a, usually a good sign. Let's go into our actor directory, hit the refresh button on the top, and there's the test group 2. So this is shortly how to create um, a group and position it where you want. The idea is uh, when you want to create a user or a computer object or whatever object you want to create is essentially the same. Uh, however, there may be differences in the attributes that you need to set. Um, for most of the objects, you only need to set a name, but in, in the case of a user, just having a name will make the user sort of useless. So we're going to have a look at this, and we're going to take it the long way. And so if I scroll up a little bit here, you can see that when I did the search for new commands, you see that there is one called new AD user, and that's what we're going to use now. So, uh, well, I'm just going to go to the bottom here. Uh, now I want to show you something. If we just go new AD user and run that as it is, with no attributes whatsoever, then the behavior of PowerShell will be to tell us what usernames we want to have. However, this isn't a very, uh, this is not a very automate automated way of adding users. So instead, we're uh, exiting the script, Control C, and then we're adding it as an, uh, with an attribute. So name, and then we can have a name. Let's go with man, mine, name equals Joachim and then we will try to run it. Uh, what happened now? And that already exists, so let's go with Joachim2. So, the user seems to be added, let's verify it. We didn't specify a path, so it should be in the user's path, and there we have Joachim2. It's a bit hard to see, but you can see that there is a little um, there is like a little round thingy with uh, an arrow pointing down, which shows that the account is disabled, and that's not very good. So now we're going to go back to our script, and we're going to do two things. First off, we want the user to end up in organizational unit 1 down here, which we'll do with it by specifying a path, and then we're going to make sure that the account is enabled. So, first thing, I'm going to borrow the path from the code that I did up here, which was right here. So, the attribute will be the same uh, as it was when we did a group. So, it's going to be a path, and then it's going to be OU, and then we don't want rule, 
groups. We definitely don't want rule groups. We want uh, organizational unit one, and then we want comma organizational unit equals script, and then we want DC D09, and we want DC local. And then we want to make it enabled as well. So I'm not really sure how to make it enabled, but I know I have to. So what I'm going to do is that I write a dash, and then I'm going to look through the list here, all the different attributes that I can set, and I'm going to see somewhere down the line, up the line here, is enabled, which sounds true. And uh, Now, enabled is something that expects a Boolean uh, attribute afterwards. A boolean is an attribute that can be either 1 or 0, true or false, whatever you wish. In this case it's gonna be dollar true. So we're, we're basically saying enabled, yes, that's what we want. So if we run this code, we're going to have the specified use for red exists. So we go, you came 23. And the password doesn't... Okay, so if we want to enable the user, it seems like we need a password. So let's do a password, and we, and we do the dash, and password, that seems like password. Uh, maybe account password. And now there is a thing. If I go account password here, and I do super34 password, something like that, I think that this is going to get me in trouble. So, here you see, down here is, you see something saying that you can't bind a parameter account password because you cannot convert the password that I supplied to da, 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 a secure string. So there is something that we have to do and something that we have to be aware of when we add passwords. And I can actually cheat at this if I go up a bit. I think that there is an example in, here you see another new AD user string. So if I go to the end of that, uh, you can see that here I'm putting the account password is in a little bit of a different way. Uh, basically, what we're doing is that we want to use the password uh, SIP 9494, and that's the password that the user is going to enter. But to be able to use that in PowerShell, we have to convert it to what is called a secure string. And that's what we do here. So we go account password, and then within uh, parentheses, we go convert to secure thre uh, string. Uh, dash as plain text because we're inputting our password in plain text and the password that we want and then we go force at the end. So we're going to steal this entire piece here. I can do that. You're going to have to write it on your own. And instead of having this, we go with the one that I wrote before, convert to secure string and all of that. And now we're really believing in it. And we run it. We get, we get no reds. And then we can look at in our Active Directory, Organizational Unit 1, and then you see here is the user. And now you also see that it's not disabled, and it has a password, so it's can, it, it can log in and all of that. And for the purpose of scripting, there is one final thing that I want to show you, because most of the time, or quite often when you're adding users, you want to have them in different organizational units. And how are you going to achieve that? Well, instead of hard coding the different attributes here. You can use it as, you, you can input variables. So for instance, here we have the path, but instead of inputting the path right there, you can have a variable. So you can declare a variable doing a dollar sign and then the name you want to have. So let's go dollar sign my path equals, and then I'm going to steal this. And then instead of having the path written out here, I change it and use my variable instead. Uh, so now we're going to create a user in the same path. And so we're going to call Joachim1234 this time. And let's try to run it and see that it works. Like so. There is something wrong with the way I specified my path. I think that you need to have double quotes uh, in the variable specification here. So this is, when I'm doing errors, th that's that's how you know that things are are getting, are being done in a realistic scenario, right? So now we mark the code where we set the variable and then the new AD user string. And let's go. 
nothing seems wrong. Going back to the Active Directory, Organizational Unit 1, hit that, uh, refresh button up there, and then you have the new user. Uh, this of course means that uh, you can have uh, in a script, if you're importing users from a comma separated file or something, you can have a way of collecting the different variables so that the new AE user string will do different things each time. Uh, I'm going to show you a very, very brief example of that, uh, or how you import uh, the file. So, if we go down here a little bit, there is a nice built-in function within PowerShell that's called import, not alias, import CSV. And then you basically specify the file you want to have. I thought I was where I, I thought I was in the right path, so I'm going to see where, what file I want. It's in, I, if I remember correctly, it's in users, users.csv, properties, can I see the path? steal that backslash users.csv so with this code I'm importing the contents of this comma, comma separated file into PowerShell uh, when I'm importing something if I do it just like this well it's gonna be imported but, but not very useful so I have to collect it to something uh, in this case, I'm using some uh, variable, which will actually be an array, uh, and I call it uh, dollar $users, users, because it's the users that I want, equals that file. And uh, there is one thing we need to know, and that's how the file is separated, what the separator is. So if we go to the file, and I open it, go edit, and it's going to open in Notepad, you can see that there is different lines, one user for each line, and in every line there is a name, there is a logon, and so on and so forth, and this is the separator, a semicolon. Uh, and for PowerShell to understand how to read this file, we're going to have to specify what the separator is. And we do that with the um, delimiter option. So we go with delimiter, and then semicolon. And now, running this piece of code will import the CSV file into the user's attribute, or into the user's array here. Uh, then, we can use a, a for each loop. A for each loop is a loop that loops, um, loops for instance, an array and does things one time for each and every uh, object in the array. So, if we do it uh, in this scenario, uh, we can do code for each and every line in the CSV file which is what we want to do. So we're going to do for each um, and we go dollar $user in users. So in this scenario uh, users is the file that we want to loop or the array that we want to loop and dollar $user here is basically uh, the variable name that we are assigning to the data or the line that we're working in in a specific iteration. So for the first iteration, user will contain this line. For the second, users will contain this line. For the third, this line, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, if we want to do a parenthesis there and a parenthesis there, now we can do things with within the for each loop. So th this for each loop, I'm not going to show you the full solution, but it's going to end in new AD user string. And what we want to do is create variables for each and every one of those attributes. So the attributes are going to be changing. So it's going to change for each iteration. In the first iteration, we want to have a variable with a name here that is uh, Lucas Hanson, and then we want to be uh, to be Therese Boberg, and so on and so forth. And that's what we want to achieve. And we can do this if you look at the top line here. You see that it's going to work as a header line and it actu it's actually going to name each and every part of the file here. And this means that we can address it. So if we go echo and we echo uh, users, this should, if we run this code, uh, echo the information about each line. And you see that's exactly what it does. And let's just wait for it to be done. 
almost any time now. Yeah. If you look at the last one here, this is the last object, and you see how it's structured. So you have name, Johan, de uh, login, Joni, department, IT, and so on and so forth. And you can actually address each and every one of these lines. So, for instance, if we go echo uh, dollar, and then we put a dot here, and we go name, then we should only get the name. And you see that, that it works. The same is if we go login, then we get the logins, and so on and so forth. This means that instead of echoing the login, we can save it into a new variable. We call it $login equals. And we can do, do the same for names. So we go $name equals. And then we have uh, dollar users you no, dollar user dot name and so on and so forth and then when we do the new ad user then we go dollar name equals oh, we go new ad user dash name equals dollar name and then we continue building our string dash the login which is some account name the attribute for login is some account name and then we go dollar login and so on and so forth now I'm just going to show you that this works I'm not going to show you how to get the path right but I'm going to specify the path to be uh, organizational unit number two. I'm hard coding that, but you're gonna have to figure out how to do the variables yourself. And then we're going to run this, and the result should be that we we're going to have a lot of users with different names, and they're all going to be positioned in organizational unit number two. Nothing red, that's promising. Organizational unit two, and you see that it worked. So that's a quick or actually kind of long introduction to PowerShell. Uh, I hope that you learned something and I'm ho hoping this will start getting you going with scripting. And thanks for me. Uh, the presenter here was Joachim Severstad with the University of Hövde. If you want to learn more, take our courses. Bye.